Let's turn our attention to this year's trends and the tensions you anticipate they would create for leaders. Now, this year you talk about tensions. Could you explain why you sort of shifted to uh, account for the tensions that these uh, trends create for leaders? So in the past, we've talked about the trends as something to conquer. Either I manage the risks or I conquer the opportunities so that my organization can perform better than competitors. I think in some cases, these are areas that conquering won't address, that we're really navigating much more complex issues. And so if I look at the nuance of the issue, I need to be managing several facets of an item to really succeed. It's an interesting uh, perspective for leaders to be able to think about. We are going to encounter tensions. How do we resolve them? How do we manage them? It's part and parcel what's what, what our responsibilities are as leaders. Yeah. And we're taught as leaders, we're supposed to be able to fix problems, make good decisions, right. and bring closure to things. And I think there are a lot of things that we can't necessarily bring closure to. And so let's look at geopolitical conditions. 55% of CEOs are now saying that conditions that are impacting their business are outside of their control. They don't control as a CEO what happens in the Ukraine or what happens in Russia or what happens in Jerusalem. And yet they need to manage the uncertainty, understand the scenarios, and be prepared to pivot. So we've always had to navigate uncertainty. We've always had to manage risk. I think the intersection of the volume and intensity of these issues is what's elevating. So in many cases, leaders will need to do what they did previously, the best leaders, and that's manage their own resilience and their presence and who they are as humans so that they can lead people in their organizations who are in varying levels of uncertainty and distress. 